We are with Meathead Goldwyn, and today we are so lucky to have him here with his new book, the wonderfully titled Meathead. And you are going to talk to us about grilling tools, because for a lot of people, they kind of just throw things on the grill and it's not quite right. So what are your biggest tips when it comes to buying the right tools? Control. Have control always, control of temperature, control of fire. Start with thermometers. I know there's a lot of knuckle draggers out there that go, we don't need thermometers, you know? I can cut into it. You can't tell by cutting into it when it's done. Medium rare steak is 130 to 135 degrees. You need a good, decent meat thermometer. Um, they read instantly within four or five seconds that little dial thermometer you have in your drawer at home. Right. Put it in the driveway, back over it with your car. It's a worthless piece of junk. This is 2016. Get a good digital, under 30 bucks. Give you a reading in five seconds. Fantastic. You'll never overcook a steak again, and that's expensive, or undercook poultry, and that's dangerous. Also, speaking of control, we have some of these items here. Why are these, these better are, than just sticking things on the These are really useful grill. tools. The, the, the bane of any backyard cook is seafood because it just sticks to the grill. Yeah. And it, 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 that's because it's almost 85 to 90 percent water. The protein just gloms onto that hot metal. You can help it by oiling the fish, but this thing is cool. This is really great. You put the fish in here. Here's, here's, a, here's, here's a fish. You're a fish. I'm a fish. <laughs> and it squeezes down and holds it there. And uh, you can get several whole fishes in here. I love these things. Um, they look like a tennis racket. There are several variations. But I like this one because it's stretchy. Right, so you're not squishing the fish. And then this guy, this is what you cook your shrimp on, you cook your vegetables on, your, uh, uh, your bell peppers. Anything uh, that can fall through. Right. I mean, when you do asparagus, there's always two or three that commit suicide and die between uh, the grades. Yeah. This is the way. And the hot metal also gives it a nice sear. I love those. And this guy, this is a That's griddle. Heavy. This happens to be enamel coated. You can get them cast iron, cast aluminum. But when you get this thing good and hot, yeah. it'll really sear a fish. And that's great. You can have smoke wrap around it. This is much better than a wooden plank. And you'll get a good dark sear here. Um, I love these things. Does it hurt? You know, there's a lot of purists who want those lines, you know, the grill lines. Like, speak to that and tell people why they don't need it. <laughs> you read the book. <laughs> I did read the book, yeah. Okay. Brown is beautiful whenever you're cooking, indoors or out. Brown is flavor. Brown is the goal of the surface of uh, steak, uh, chicken. Uh, potatoes, uh, asparagus, vegetables. You want a little crunchy brown on the surface. That's something called the Maillard reaction. And if you put grill marks on it, when you lay it on the grate and you get these nice little cross hatches, those cross hatches are the Maillard reaction and they're great flavor. But in between, you have undeveloped potential. <laughs> you have no flavor. It's not living up to its <clears throat> No. Moment. And so you want to flip the steak and get all over brown, edge to edge brown. You're told in so many books, you lay it down, you let it sit there, then you rotate it, and then you let it sit there. In fact, you want to flip it often so that the heat, the energy that's coming from below the meat, builds up in the surface and pushes down in. Maximum flavor, maximum tenderness. So you heard it here first. <laughs> Get rid of your grill marks. That, you know, I think that's hard for people to give up. Yep. But now they know the reason. We're Pavlovian trained to salivate when we see grill marks. <laughs> I say retrain yourself. When you see dark surface all over, now you can salivate. Perfect. And so other items that we have here, I mean, this is fun. Oh, I love what these. What are you doing with this? The, um, the old, a lot of us have brushes, like paint brushes, mm -hmm. and they're really hard to clean. They're yeah. a lovely little place for microbes to set up housekeeping. Mm -hmm. This is silicon, and there's a lot of them out there, and they're easy to clean. They're dishwasher safe, mm -hmm. um, and they really load up with sauce. You dip this in barbecue sauce, and it holds a ton of sauce because of the air gaps in between. Uh, silicon brush is a great, nice long handle so you can yeah. leave some hair on your hand. Here's a way to protect the hair on your hand too. Yeah. I love these leather gloves because you have fingers. You can actually grip things. Right. And these are good enough. I've actually picked up charcoals with these. They don't wow. burn through. And when they get really dirty and grimy, you can just wash them in the sink or in the uh, washing machine and they come all the way up to your elbows to protect your arms. And they look cool, like yeah, they'll look they look professional. I'm much better than mitts. Right, those are one of those things where I looked at I was like, even if you're not that great, you'll look cool. And oh you yeah. Have, like yeah. leather gloves. Leather gloves. And then shears, we are not gardening. What are we doing? No, I mean for, ch for chickens, chickens, if you cook a chicken whole, 
It's hard to get air into the center. There's an air bubble in the center of the chicken. Mm -hmm. So the center of the chicken never really browns. Remember, brown is beautiful. You right. want maximum flavor. So the best way to cook chickens are to break them up into four separate parts or cut them in half or butterfly them what they call spatchcocking yeah. and the best way to do that is with a kitchen shears there's a million uses for kitchen shears but this will just chomp right through the rib bones but that way you can lay the chicken flat and you can brown the interior of the chicken it'll also cook faster the faster things cook the more moisture is left behind well Minha, thank you so much for joining us and giving us some tips on what to buy when we're getting started grilling really appreciate it and obviously if you want to know more always pick up the book. Thank you so much. Allie, it's been great being with you. Thank, Thank you very you. much.